Hello and welcome back to my series about Titian's poesy paintings created for Philip II of Spain. In this first of three videos about Diana and Actaeon, we are going to learn why hunting was a very dangerous pastime indeed. Actaeon, like Adonis, was a normal, happy youth who loved nothing more than to spend the day with his friends hunting. Unfortunately, on this particular day, he got separated from the rest of the party and was walking home with his hounds when he heard a noise in the woods. I wouldn't mind betting, in fact, I would stake a lot on it, that if Actian had his time again, he would just turn round and tiptoe off in the other direction. But he doesn't have his time again, and these sounds are intriguing. It's women's voices, it's water splashing, and so he's curious, and let's face it, probably a little bit excited as well, and he follows the noise to its source. And what does he find? Well, he stumbles upon the scene that Titian has depicted here, Diana bathing with her nymphs. So this painting, along with Diana and Callisto, were the fourth and the fifth paintings that were delivered at the same time in 1559 to Philip II of Spain. Now, if Actaeon had stumbled upon a different goddess, for example, Venus, the story would be entirely different. In fact, to be honest, we probably wouldn't even have a story at all. But Diana is not Venus, and Diana is not a goddess to be messed with. Diana is the goddess of the hunt. She is the goddess of the moon, of fertility, of childbirth, and also she is a chaste goddess. So when Actaeon blusters in and sees her naked bathing with her nymphs, she is utterly humiliated and also incandescent with rage. Now, being a goddess, she doesn't just yell at Actaeon to get out and then spend the next three days moaning to her nymphs about the, the audacity of mortals. No she does something rather more drastic. You see this left foot that is really edging close to the water's edge here? Well, she dips her toe in the water and she flicks water, just a splash of water at Actaeon with the words, now you may tell the story of seeing Diana naked if storytelling is in your power. These are strange words because you would imagine that Diana wouldn't want anybody to know that Actaeon had seen her naked. But actually she's taunting him because within just a moment of being flicked with water, Actaeon begins to transform into a stag. He sees his reflection, is utterly horrified and terrified, and instinct kicks in, off he runs. His hounds run after him, but this time they are not running with him, they are chasing him. So Actaeon is caught and torn apart by his own hounds. That's a new low, isn't it? I mean, at least Adonis didn't know the wild boar that killed him. Whew, horrible. But of course, this isn't Titian's story, but a story from Ovid's Metamorphosis with its origins in Greek mythology. And here, Titian has followed the story fairly faithfully, but has taken a little bit of artistic license because in Ovid's text, the nymphs and Diana are actually still in the water when Actaeon stumbles across them. But here they are out and you know, it's a few moments later, so they're drying themselves, which of course suits Titian's purposes perfectly because now we have not just one nude, but a whole woodland clearing full of them. And so we have the reclining nude, we have the nude with her back to us, but standing up this time, we have a couple of seated nudes, we have the nude behind the pillar, so the teasing nude, and then we have Diana herself, who quite frankly is in the most awkward, 
ungainly pose, well, of the whole series and certainly of this whole painting. So why has Titian chosen to depict her so unregally? She doesn't look like a goddess at all. Well, I think there are reasons for that. And in the next video, I will try and unpick them for you. I hope you'll join me. Bye.